Right then, I've uh, I've got an apology to make here. I've just done a, a video, a few videos of me cutting the horn slots out in the frame, and uh, just by accident, I've gone and deleted the video in which I did. Uh, not quite sure how I did it, but there you go. These things happen, I suppose. So before I move on to my workbench, I'll just apologise for not showing these horn slots being cut. Uh, I didn't do much videoing actually, I was just explaining what I was doing really, so I'll just explain again without any cutting. I pushed my vice up to the end and I set my frames up in my vice and I supported them on some parallels on the bed and I clamped everything down and then I, I got a 5 16 cutter in my miller and I did these two first, the front two because my, my traverse on my table is only 11 inch so I had to move it over in two two sections so I put my milling cutter in and I, I went within the 30 second of my, of my lines and I milled round then that all dropped out then I continued milling to the final dimension and got that dimension within a thousandth of an inch then I moved over with my dials to get pick this slot up so I can get the accurate an accurate measurement. Did the same again with my 5 16 inch cutter, took a couple of passes round, that dropped out, then I did a, fi a finishing cut. Then I undid my vice, undid my clamps, moved the whole frame over till this slot, the second one I did, was where the first one is now. Okay, then I picked, I picked one of the machine faces up and then I moved over the same amount as I did the first time to pick my third slot up over here. So imagine that's over there now, I'll just move it just, just to show a bit of re reality of what I did. So it was like that. So I picked this slot up which had machine, then I moved over and then I machined this slot exactly like I did the others and I've got them all within a, th uh, a thousandth of an inch right so if you've not got a milling machine don't worry you can either cut them out and file them or use a, a milling attachment in your lathe and just do them individually like I've done but you'd have to do them individually and, and do it that way so don't worry about if, you, if you've not got a miller my miller's not not a fantastic miller, it's just a, a hobby, a, a basic hobby miller and I have to shift things around on this anyway because it's, it's it's fairly small so it swings and roundabouts really, if, you, if you've got a lathe put your, put your vertical slide on and put your vice on or clamp it to an angle plate whatever and then do it that way so sorry about that but so I just missed a little bit of milling off there Yeah, so I've had a bit of a clean up now. I've come off my milling machine and cleaned down and uh, cleaned my workbench down. So I've now I've deburred everything. I've now got my slots cut for my horn guides. I've got me uh, cut out there for me uh, pony wheels at the rear. Cause I'm making a I'm making an O three sorry an O six two version of a sweet pea which is called a meter maid. Uh, anybody that's a beginner like me might not might not understand some of the terminology so I don't understand half on it yet but the pony wheels are for the pony truck where the pony truck sits at the back and it's just a set of two wheels on a on a pivot point so that's for my pony wheels. Uh, I'll just digress for one second. About five months back, I, st I started my boiler for, for this loco. I thought I'd do the boiler first and get the hard bit out of the way because I've never done a boiler. And I thought, if I can't succeed at that, then there's no point really continuing. But I've got my boiler finished now anyway. 
You can see that in a in a series of videos which I did. So I digress here. While I were doing my boiler, I made the stays for the boiler. Different length stays, various lengths. And when I come to put the boiler together to solder it, I, I couldn't find this stay. And everything I'd been working with were on my workbench, so I hadn't moved anything. I searched my garage high and low, hoovered all the floor up, checked over, could I echoes like find this stay? I've just come to clean my workbench down from doing this milling job and this drilling job and I looked on workbench and that just appeared from nowhere. So it's marvellous, isn't it? You drop something in, in your workshop or your garage and, well, it's, it amazes me sometimes. I spent about a, a day looking for that. I know it would have been quicker to make, make another straight away, but, you know, when you've already made it, you think it's got to be here somewhere. Anyway, I digress. Uh, right, where were I? Yeah, got all my, my slots cut out, and I've I've milled these, as I've shown you. Now, this is a... this They class this as a beginner's loco for various reasons. One's the boiler, because it's a marine boiler, and various other things. Now, working to this book that I've got, you can actually make make this loco without a milling machine if you want. You, you just need a lathe, and probably a milling attachment in your lathe, unless you're really good at filing. So you can manage without a miller. And... Uh, just one example of that, another example besides the boiler, is when you come to make the horn guides, that's these things here, they're quite simple really, it's just a T section and uh, they fit in the frames I'll just, I'll just zoom in a little bit. They fit in the frames here, one on each side, so your axle box can run up and down on... They fit in the frame here, so your axle box can run up and down and, and have a bearing surface that's that's what that's thick, a lot thicker than your frame material. Uh, <clears throat> now, on a lot of locos I've seen, and I'm only I'm only a beginner. Remember, they've got fancy castings for for own guides, <clears throat> and uh, or they're fabricated in a in a intricate way. But with this one, it's quite simple, really. It's just a T section. So you've just got to machine machine the T up, make sure that they, they're accurate, and rivet them on. And then when you've got the frames fitted together, I think it's good practice then to, to run a milling machine, a milling cutter, down the faces again to make sure that everything's in line. But in this book, it just tells you to get your horn guide slots cut accurately get your horn guides cut accurate and then rivet them on and using a square and a straight edge make sure everything's in line so it's quite simple in that respect um, if you don't want to go to trouble uh, having a milling machine to mill everything up uh, make sure everything's in line uh, there's another thing about uh, about it being a a beginner's loco, and it's just slipped my mind now. Just a minute. All oh, right, yeah. the The valve gear is on the outside of the frames. It's called a Hackworth valve gear, <clears throat> and that's 
I'm told, I don't know, I've not got experience, but I'm told that's a, another simple design on Loco because your cylinders are going to fit on the outside and uh, it's a simple uh, mechanism apparently or as simple as can be because some of the Locos have the valve gear on the inside of the frames so it's a lot more difficult to, you know, for, for setting it up and everything, I think. And if anything goes wrong, well, when, when you've got your loco complete, you've got to get into the middle of your frames, whereas this one, they're on the outside. Uh, so that's another uh, a plus for a beginner, I think. Anyway... I've now got my frames completed and I'm going to move on now to making the stretchers. That's these. And these are going to hold the frames apart. And give it all its structure. And the buffer beams on the end. So I'm going to make a start of them next. And I'm also going to make a start of the uh, machine in the horn guides up to the dimensions ready for slotting in here like that. Obviously there's a lot, lot of material to come off this. I come by this casting, this, this uh, cast iron casting in a box of bits I bought. I was prepared not to buy any castings, I was just going to... Uh, fabricate and, uh, and machine everything up fabricated but I've got the castings for them so I'm going to use them so my next job then is to make a start on these stretchers and these stretchers they're just bits of plate same as the frame with angle attached to them on the ends and riveted to them to the, and then you've got to get the required width and then you just t transfer your frame holes into the other side of the angle, ready for 